In 1995, a Chinese man named Eric Yuan applied for a US visa, but he was rejected. Not giving up, he applied again and was rejected again. In the span of just two years, he had applied for the visa eight times, rejected every time. Who would have known that later, this man would go on to give birth to a multi-billion dollar company, giving sleepless nights to tech giants like Google and Microsoft. This is the story of Eric Yuan, a former Cisco employee who shook the roots of Cisco and WebEx, creating a video conferencing tool named Zoom. Eric Yuan was born in China on February 20th, 1970. He graduated from the Shandong Institute of Business and Technology in Applied Mathematics with a minor in computer application. He then obtained a master's degree from the China University of Mining in Technology. After hearing a speech by Bill Gates in 1994, Eric decided he wanted to move to the US to get in on the growing dot-com industry. But before finally moving to the United States, he had applied for the visa eight times over two two years and was rejected every time. In 1997, Yuan's luck would change on his ninth and final visit to the US consulate when he was granted a visa to travel to the United States. Eric moved to Silicon Valley and accepted an engineering role at a young company called WebEx Communications. A decade later, he was the vice president of engineering. The same year, Cisco acquired WebEx for $3.2 billion. Needless to say, he was one of the team of engineers responsible for building the initial version of WebEx's web conferencing product. So he was also inherited by Cisco during the acquisition. WebEx was initially founded by Subra ER and Menzu in 1995, and as mentioned earlier, was acquired by Cisco in 2007. WebEx grew rapidly under the Cisco umbrella. Eric's hard work earned him numerous promotions before landing him the role of corporate vice president of engineering. During this period, Eric grew the product's engineering team from a handful of developers to a team of of more than 800 engineers. The annual revenue expanded to upwards of $800 million. WebEx had immense growth. During multiple interviews, Eric has told that he has worked hard to make WebEx better and even 13 years later, he did not see a single happy customer. In his opinion, the product didn't evolve quickly enough, making it a chore for customers to use. During those days, people were not using WebEx because they wanted to, they were using WebEx because they had to. Eric tried to persuade his fellow executives that they urgently needed to improve WebEx, but Cisco didn't listen. At the time, Cisco's strategy for web conferencing didn't involve much improvement for existing products. By now, Eric had already realized that if he had to create a product he wanted, he would have to leave Cisco. The choice was clear. So in June 2011, he finally did it. After being with WebEx for 14 years, Eric left the comfort of the vice president to finally start his own competitor business. Was he really thinking right to take that much of a risk? Well, it turns out that he was not much happy at Cisco either, so it wasn't much of a risk according to him. But wait, in the initial days, Zoom was known as SASB. SASB raised a total of $3 million in seed funding from people like former WebEx CEO Subra ER and Yahoo co-founder Jerry. The name was changed to Zoom Video Communications Incorporated in 2012. In August 2012, Zoom launched its first version of the product. The early Zoom product was quite impressive. Initially available as a web app and for iOS, Zoom allowed up to 15 concurrent meeting attendees. It was optimized to run well even on weaker, unstable wireless connections. Zoom's audio and video quality were both very high. It even automatically detected users' operating systems and screen resolutions. And the best part, attendees didn't have to download anything or even log in. Only meeting hosts had to have a Zoom account. Those features set Zoom apart from the competitors. Shortly after, Zoom got reviewed by Walt Mossberg from the Wall Street Journal. He told, Zoom.us is a very good product with lots of practical uses. This really helped Zoom to get that boost. According to Eric, the company was run just by the engineers in the early days. They didn't have product managers or even a QA team. They expanded to other human resource fields only after the company achieved over $1 million in monthly recurring 
recurring revenue. Before that, everything was simply left to the engineers to do, including closing sales. Talking about engineers, Zoom had poached 45 engineers from Yuan's former company WebEx. Isn't that huge? But during the early days, most of the engineers were hired from China for cost saving, as Chinese engineers were much cheaper than American ones. By 2014, Zoom already had 10 million total users. This year, Zoom released Zoom Presence. This was Zoom's room-based video conferencing product. Later the same year, Zoom unveiled its video webinar platform. It supported up to 25 participants per webinar. Hosts could then choose to pay for between 100 and 3,000 attendees. This made video webinars highly scalable and allowed hosts to pay only for the audience size they required. In February 2015, Zoom announced that the company had raised $30 million as part of its Series C round led by Emergence Capital. It was a major step in the company's fundraising. Investors were not just impressed by Zoom's technology, they were also impressed by how tightly Yuan ran a ship. Same year, the breakout rooms were introduced. This feature allowed hosts to create smaller groups within a larger meeting. In 2016, the year virtual background feature was launched. Zoom took one of the first major marketing campaigns. Zoom entered into a three-year partnership with the Warriors. Zoom gave the Warriors software to communicate with fans. In exchange, Zoom's logo would feature prominently during Warriors games at Oakland's Oracle Arena. According to Eric, this exclusive branding exposure actually helped to accelerate sales cycles for the company. In 2018, Zoom released a feature called Zoom Phone. It was a cloud-based phone system. Now, Zoom could offer enterprise firms end-to-end -end telephone services without the need for new hardware, disruption in phone service, or migration of existing phone numbers. In addition, Zoom Phone's detail analytics dashboard gave administrators unprecedented insight into the status and performance of their communications. In 2019, Zoom was listed on the NASDAQ. According to Forbes, Zoom is one of the rare tech unicorns that has completed an IPO whilst being profitable. In 2020, the pandemic hit. And we know the rest. Zoom's chief financial officer, Kelly Steckelberg, says she can pinpoint the day when everything changed. March 15th, 2020. According to her, the demand grew exponentially, almost overnight. Zoom said that the daily users spiked to 200 million in March, up from 10 million in December last year. The pandemic definitely had a major role in making Zoom what it is today. In fact, most of the popularity of Zoom came from the pandemic era. So what was actually there behind Zoom's success? Zoom has grown from a scrappy upstart to one of the most widely used web conferencing products in the world. Thousands of companies worldwide rely on Zoom for meetings, telepresence, and webinars. Zoom is not just a web conferencing product, it's a video enabled workspace platform. The real reason Zoom had the upper hand over its competitors was that it was simply way easier to use. Zoom made sending a meeting link as easy as sharing a YouTube video. People invited to Zoom meetings don't have to log in or download software, a key difference with competing products. Another reason behind Zoom's success was Eric's passion for his work. According to him, when it's tough to make a decision, it's better to take a step back. Eric never set out to build the world's most profitable web conferencing company. He wanted to build the world's best web conferencing product. Many entrepreneurs as well as aspirants tell that Eric has been a huge inspiration for them. In the meantime, Zoom's growing popularity and convenience came with a downside too. Intruders crashed Zoom meetings because the security was not so high. The attack soon gained a name, Zoom bombing. Well, <laughs> that's another part of the story. The thing is, spin-offs really do happen, and they are very crucial for innovation. So what do you think? Is Zoom at its peak now? Where could Zoom go from here? Don't forget to share your views in the comments down below. Also, what's your favorite video conferencing tool?